Now back to Outdoors with Larry Ray on ESPN 790. Brought to you proudly by the Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency, Gaston's White River Resort, and Barton Power Sports. Hey, good Saturday morning. Welcome back to Outdoors with Larry Ray on this Saturday, January the 30th. This yeah. is, and we're turning in, in this in the segment. last segment, man. Last you know, segment. time flies it, when it, you have fun. When you're having fun on this Saturday morning, and I can't think of two better people to close out the segment with, and then a, a story from Gene Smith and a poem from Charlie Covenant. Now the 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 problem here is Dave is which one should we let go first? Uh, probably uh, age before beauty. Well there's, well, there's not anyone over there. Then. <laughs> Ageless beauty. Ageless beauty. I think yeah. we ought to let Charlie go first because I think it's hard to follow one of Gene's yeah, stories. Yeah, you know. You know. He, Charlie, Charlie can open for Gene. Yeah, he, Gene used to, yeah. used to date a photographer, but it, nothing developed. Nothing yeah, developed. So, uh, all right. So that's one of his. So Charlie Covenant, before you do this, tell him again exactly. Charlie Covenant is a retired uh, chaplain from Baptist Hospital. Uh, he was there when they opened the doors at the Baptist Hospital down on the river, you know. And uh, he, he when when General Grant came through town, <laughs> and, and Charlie helped he did him. get out of the way when Bedford Forrest rode through. Yeah, well, he's still riding through. Yeah, you know. But Char- how long did you work for the Baptist Hospital, Charlie? Uh, I worked a total of thirty-four years. A total of thirty-four years. Uh-huh. Why'd you work in shifts? No, I mean uh, I did. I worked in shifts. <laughs> you yeah. did usually daytime. Thirty-four years as a chaplain. Was that a call, Charlie? Did you feel like that? I you, feel like it was. Yeah. yeah, I mean, is that what you wanted to be growing up as oh, a chaplain? Oh no, I didn't even think anything about that. Because you went to seminary. Tell our listeners a little bit about yourself. I grew up in Little Rock. All right. I uh, went to Washita Baptist University, and okay. During those four years there, I felt like I wanted to be a clinical psychologist, uh-huh. or maybe work on a church staff somewhere as a minister of pastoral counseling. Yeah. But all along, it seemed like the Lord had something else in mind for me, and my joy and peace of mind came about in seeking what that was. So how long did you did you come over to Memphis? Uh, this is actually our second time to live here in Memphis. Uh, Betty and I came to Memphis in June of 71 and moved back to Little Rock in June of 75. And then you came back. Then I came back in June of 79. And You're a June person. You're, you're just a June bug. And, That's yeah, it. Just, he and his yeah, wife, I'm Betty. They, new, newcomer. All right. And and whether he knows it or not, he has secretly fulfilled his, you know, the clinical psychologist. He's hanging around crazy people. Yeah, he's here. Yeah. He's with us. It's always yeah. a challenge. It's That's a challenge. He and his wife, Betty, have two boys. Yeah. And so uh, uh, Andy and Daniel and Daniel. OK. And uh, Daniel is in Daniel's in Portland, Oregon. Oregon and and Andy's in Birmingham. In wildlife. Um, he's a wetland biologist. Really. He is in Portland, Oregon. And, and Andy, our two boys, Daniel was always the outdoorsy type. Yeah. And so that's why he's outdoorsy. Yeah, that's it's, right. It's a long way to Portland, though. I think so. he got some of that from his dad. All right, how about your poetry now? I mean, OK. Uh, no, no, no. So how long have you when did you just kick around on this and like to do it? Because he's always doing it for ideas come to your head, right? Yeah, and it was interesting that during those years of working at the hospital, I got a lot of my inspiration from that setting, although not all of the poetry topics were about the clinical setting. A lot of it was about fishing and outdoors Uh and the mountains and things in nature. Because you've loved the outdoors. Cause, yeah, that's one of my first loves. Yeah. It really is. And, and, and I know that he said his wife wants to get a crossbow, so we'll work on that for her. Uh, does she want a real one or a toy one? She wants a real one. <laughs> when she gets the chance, she shoots our neighbor's crossbow in the backyard. Uh, the apple off your head. Oh, no. I, you're the apple that, of her I'm eye. not that brave. No, you're not that. So, yeah. Charlie, so the, this poem is called again? It's called Carry a Good Stick. And Carry you know, Larry, a Good when Stick. When we think about the different types of hunting that outdoorsmen participate in, we realize that in most of them, uh, each one is uh, on a calendar for a certain period of time or days, like a month or whatever. But then there's other pastimes, such as hiking and backpacking and camping, that you can do year-round. And... Um, this poem is called Carry a Good Stick. All right, get right up on that microphone and let's hear it. Carrying a good, good, stick. good yeah. stick. 
I rarely go forth on a hiking trail without my trusty walking stick. I have a collection of ten or more, so I can literally take my pick. One is made of hickory. It is sturdy, straight, and strong. With this as a walking companion, I know I will rarely go wrong. One is made of hop hornbeam. It is sinewy looking and hard. It appears as a twisted muscle and feels good to this whistling bard. You have heard it said for years, walk softly and carry a big stick. Well, you can do this on a forest trail, whether a city slicker or country hick. And oh, the help it will give to you, to those aching joints and knees. It actually helps to relieve some stress as you plod through the bushes and trees. Moses of old used a walking stick. T'was his faithful staff and stay. With it, he parted the Red Sea waters, and the Israelites progressed on their way. Yours need not be fancy or costly, but just right for your health, your height, and weight. If your stick is too long or too heavy, then you'll tote a burden you hate. If approaching a snake lying in your path, and he needs a quick, gentle budge, your trusty old stick can be of good use as you got him away with a nudge. Don't forget your trustworthy staff when wading or crossing a stream. It's like a third leg when walking is hard, when that creek seems tricky and mean. Of all the stuff in your hiking gear, your stick must be part of your goods. One day you may pass it on to a son, a valuable souvenir from the woods. All right. Uh, that was yeah. good, Charlie. You know, I've got uh, several walking sticks. Gene has given me a couple. Yeah, I've got about uh, 30. I'm yeah. hooked on them. Yeah. <laughs> You've got, uh, Dave's got some. I've got several. Yeah, you know, I've got and, several. And not only, you know, for you know hiking and stuff and some of the things he mentioned, you need a good walking stick in the woods because, you know, Get the spider webs. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, that too. Well, you need a good stick just walking in your neighborhood to keep the the, the, dog the critters off. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, it, yeah. yeah, or maybe a feisty walker that's going around you, and you know. So but, that's how uh, Gene got his hat. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah. So Charlie, thank you for that, and uh, that uh, we'll have that posted on lroutdoors.com dot uh, com under uh, under Charlie's name, and uh, of course we now have the diner updated. Uh, Greg's still ordering. He, uh, the guys never come to him yet. We've added Frank Barton to that list, and uh, it's pretty cool. And of course, Gene Smith. I know that uh, this man knows more stories, and he's he's asked me. Uh, Half of these are true. Uh, Give a take a lie, too. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> And he's now the director, uh, the president of of the Sam Club. Yeah. At uh, Leewood Baptist Church. And that stands for Senior Adult Ministry. Ministry, right. Okay. And it's, uh, so it's not anything to do with Walmart. No, no. And so he's now uh, asked me to come speak sometime. I look forward to doing that. And uh, I'm looking forward to speaking at Cary Chapel Baptist Church on uh, February the 27th. Uh, I'm going down to Cary Chapel. It's a wonderful little church right out of uh, uh, Sladen, pretty close down that in the Pleasant View area, Cary Chapel Baptist Church. But... Uh, Got classes gearing up? I got one coming up in February, you're right. You know. It's getting time. I always have one right before uh, turkey season also. Okay. And this and, uh, and you're new at this. Too. Yes, I am. Okay. He always gets nervous. Thirty four years. Thirty four years. Also the scholastic clays, you have to have a hunter ed to do the scholastic clays too, and it's getting really popular. Uh, Greg Ratliff just held up two fingers. I don't he, know if he needs to go. I don't know if he needs to get out of the room or whatever. The, what does that two mean? Yeah, is that that's a victory sign? Maybe yeah, you know. Peace, brother. All right, let me. I know he holds he holds them up for you. He just points at me. Oh, when he I, does. When he I'm gets serious. On the other side of the glass. All right, let me tell you about next week's show because it will be open mic Saturday, and uh, these same same two guys you got to put up with them again. Uh, brother Daryl and brother Daryl will be in here next Saturday. We're taking your calls. Um, got some prizes to give away. Maybe we can get back to that Avery $25. We did, we missed that last time, but I know we're going to have a subscription to the Mid-South Hunting and Fishing News. Uh, try to get some reports from the from, from the duck blind. Yeah, I line some up. See yeah. if we can line some up. And so if you're taking a youngster uh, hunting next Saturday, give us a call, 1-800-759-6279. You get that? That's 1-800-759-6279. 
or 274-7979 because we will be in the luxurious Intercom Radio studio next Saturday. If uh, bright and early at 6 o'clock in the morning, we'll come on the air for show number 756. I'm not going to be able to remember all that and everything, so I'll try to do that. Uh, Charlie Covenant, thank you, buddy. Thank you. I didn't put you on the spot by telling your history, but I wanted to give some credibility to who you are that, you know, we found Charlie on the side of the street one morning Mm. and brought him in here to do this. He was thumbing a ride. He was, and he didn't even have a thumb, you know, (laughs) so uh, he, he, he was fisting a ride. Gene Smith, thank you for your uh, contribution. Uh, but, 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 but I can't. But, but, but what's your name again? Uh, Bob Walker. Bob Walker. <laughs> Easy for you to say. And thank you, Minister of Propaganda. Oh, yeah. And we'll see Always you next Saturday and everything. So this is Larry Ray. Before I go off, I really want to say that, uh, you know, Memphis lost a great athlete this past week in Billy Fletcher, a great quarterback for the University of Memphis and Memphis State. And, uh, uh, Ron McSwain told me about it. Neil Cordell told me about it. And uh, Billy was one of those. I didn't have a chance to see Billy Fletcher play, but I've seen uh, uh, eight millimeter film of him back in those days. And uh, he played both ways. And uh, uh, the folks at Germantown Baptist uh, met with Billy and uh, had some great conversation at the end of his life. And uh, Billy Fletcher, what a name. Uh, well, he will be missed. And I heard this week that Jackie Turberfield had passed away, his brother told me that, and I'm going to have some more about Jackie on next week's show also because he was one of those guys that really helped me when I got started. Okay, this is Larry Ray. I'd like to say a happy birthday for my daughter, Sherry Smith. Happy birthday to Sherry Smith. Yeah, belated. Her birthday was Friday. Was Friday. So you did take her out, right? Uh, yes, I did. Okay, well, I, I, I want to say now, uh, happy birthday to my granddaughter. She turned 20 yesterday, bought her two new tires for her birthday. And okay. My birthday was yeah. January 17th. Uh, uh, pardon? My birthday was January 17th. It sure was. Same and date and I'm, gonna, I'm going to ask you the question. That I know that everybody's. Out of time. everybody's okay. You're going to see your shadow Tuesday? I'm going to see my shadow. No, because my shadow is too small. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> Groundhog Day. Let's take a break. Let's, let's get out of here and say, see you next week. This is Larry Ray reminding you to do each and every week. It doesn't cost an extra cent to be a good sport, and God bless the USA.